to the first unit on the syntax tutorials, we're going to look at input and output statements. So in Community 2, the focus is very much on uh, passing information to and from other programs and storing data into, da into files rather than um, inputting data and, and printing it out to someone sitting in front of a computer. You are occasionally going to need to go and actually do, interact with the human operator. So for simple interactions, we can of course just use the print and input functions that you came that you were introduced to last year. So print just simply goes and takes um, a list of things to go and print out, and it'll print them all out. Um, it's got some other features as well that you can look in the documentation, um, and you'll see at various other videos that I'm using slightly different tweaks on the print function to do different things. Um, many of the tutorials have you will see that although I'm using the print, when I'm printing the string, I'm putting in some curly brace placeholders and then having dot format at the end of the string in order to supply values into, the, into those placeholders. And this is actually a much more flexible way to format data into a string and so it allows you to do some things that um, you can't just do by concatenating the, the things to print out um, in the print statement with commas. So here's an example of, of some of the things you can do. So in these examples, I'm just creating three variables, x, y, and z. Um, so x is an integer um, with a value of 34, y is a floating point number, um, and z is the Boolean value true. So to first of all, I'm gonna um, use the, the format at the end of the string. And you see what I've got in the string in the print line is the three placeholders, um, and then uh, dot format, and then x, y, z. And what happens is that format looks through the, the string I've given it and it puts its first argument into the first placeholder, the second one into the second placeholder, and the third one into the third placeholder. And so the resultant string you print is what you'd expect it to be. So using the format state method, you can um, also c more directly control what's going to appear, where, and, and how you can repeat values within the string. So. Um, here are three examples of doing um, operations like this. So the first one here, um, you'll see that in this time the placeholders have a number in them. So it's curly brace 0, a curly brace 1, a curly brace 2. Um, and then at the end of the string there's another curly brace 0. So what happens here, when you put a number in the placeholder, the, for the, the format method it realises that the numbers are telling it which of its arguments go into which place in the string. So here we simply say you put the first argument in where it's curly brace 0, the second in where it's curly brace 1, and the third in where it's curly brace 2. Um, remembering that this is because Python always counts from a 0. So the first thing in Python is always um, given the number 0. Um, and then it comes to the fourth placeholder in that string, and that's got a curly brace 0 in it, so it goes, ah, that means I need the first argument again. So that when you look at the, the printout of that, you see that's what it's got and done. It's got the three values printed out and it comes back and prints out 34 again because um, we've told it we want the the first placeholder argument back. Alternatively rather than giving the placeholders numbers we can give them names. So in the second version we've given them the names integer, uh, float number um, and uh, we'll also give it the boolean of name boolean although we're not using it in our string. So then in the dot format we pass them as keyword arguments, so you want to refer to functions uh, to video to understand what a keyword argument is. So we give it the name equals the value, the name equals the value, the name equals the value. And so when you format the string, it looks through, finds a placeholder, works out what name it is, and matches that to the name that has been given in the format. This is useful if you've got a very long string which you may be repeating some bits of information many times over, or in different places. And in order for you to understand when you're just reading the code which value is going to go where in that string you've created, um, it helps if you can give them a name rather than having to remember which was the first and which was the third and which was the 23rd and, and so on. So the other thing that um, format lets you go and do is it lets you to go and actually um, do some uh, formatting of the actual values you're printing out. So a really common example of where you might want to do this is to restrict the number of decimal places that you're printing a floating point number out to. So the um, floating point value we've got that's in the variable y, you'll see it has an awful lot of decimal places to it. 
and so if we want to just control how many places we put it to we can do something that we're doing in the third format string so now inside that placeholder there is a colon which tells it okay we're now going to switch and start giving you some information about how to format the value rather than which value it is we're using and then the point 1f so the f means that it's a floating point number that is being given and the point 1 translates to saying there's one decimal place after the point sign if it had been point 0.2 it would have been two decimal places after the um, decimal point if it was point 0.3 it would have been three and so on uh, and you could also do other things like can tell it whether to have leading zeros and have things of a certain width and how many zeros to have at the end of the floating point number as well um, so there's quite a lot of, of, of things you can do if you're interested in looking at the details then um, you should look at the documentation on docs.python.org um, and it's got all the full um, uh, gory details of how to use the format string. So as I said, mostly in Computing 2 you'll not need to use input as you're going to be writing code that's supposed to work with other code and not with humans. So you can't assume that there is somebody there to go and type anything into the keyboard. In fact, you can't even assume there is a keyboard for anybody to type anything at either. So generally speaking, you don't need to use input. But if you do need to use input, just as a reminder, um, here's how it works. So an input will always just simply ask the user for a string and then give you back the, the string as they've typed it in. So if you need to convert it to, say, an integer or a floating point number, then you have to do that conversion yourself um, using the things we've just covered in the last part of this video. Or alternatively, and, and as well, you have to uh, make sure you do all the error.